Jean Keys, 48 and 29. Good. What's showing up for you guys? I know some of you can't talk, but Monica, I don't know if you can talk. Jack, it looks like you're in the car. <laughs> I, I can hear you now. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you just popped on, Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Thanks for hopping on. Hey. Hey. Awesome. So did anyone want to talk? We, I just asked everybody how their week went with the 48th and 29th Gene Key and how it's kind of been showing up for you guys. For well, to for me, um, sorry, was someone else going to talk? You're talking. <laughs> okay. So um, for me, it seems like I was already, I made a post about this, but I'll just, you know, say it. Um, it seems like I was already tuning into the energy, especially of, well, I think both 29 and 48. I spent more time with Gene Key 29. Um, on Monday, I was like, oh, I want to go get myself a commitment ring to commit to myself and my goals. And I was just was really inspired. And then, Ashley, you announced that <laughs> Gene Key 29 was, <laughs> was up for contemplation with this group. And I was just like, that's literally <laughs> perfect. <laughs> and I guess I was also invoking Gene Key 48 which I've, I've not fully read about yet, but I was just more looking at the shadow aspect of that and contemplating that. But I know it's about resourcefulness. When I went to go get like a, a commitment ring at the crystal shop with me, um, or for me, I decided I would just use this ring. It was like resourceful, I'll just use what I have. That's perfect, like I don't need anything else. I already have what I need. And so, during your live video, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I've already been with this energy and I'm so amazed how it's already been coming through. And then yesterday, I was just really practicing being in the energy of commitment to myself and my goals, my intentions. And what if I just fully commit to doing it rather than feeling afraid? And that was amazing. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, because I think half-heartedness is, it's like the root is, all, all the roots are fear. And so when we're, when we're feeling afraid, we start to doubt our commitments and we're like, mm -hmm. should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? And then we go down that whole rabbit hole and then we either end it, end it prematurely because we're scared of that failure or rejection or whatever it is, or we, we hold on so strongly that we do not understand when the cycle is done. Because that one talks a lot about cycles and not to judge the length of the cycle either, too, you know. So obviously when you're committing to yourself, you're committing to, to life, yourself, and uh, you're basically committing to yourself until you die. Because <laughs> that's kind of how that cycle goes, you know. Um, but even not, also I believe, like not holding on to different phases of you because we, we evolve. So if we're so set on things being a certain way, we hold on to the old us and we don't quite let it go. And if we're not letting go of that cycle so that we can have a new rebirth, then we are not going through the phases. And I think it talks about, um, in the Gene Keys and also in Human Design, it talks about seven-year cycles and how um, we go through those. And that's when our cells begin to regenerate. It takes seven years for our cells to completely um, start out new and fresh. And so they say it takes seven years to master anything. So when you're starting Human Design or Gene Keys, supposedly takes seven years to master it which I mean that's when it's permeating through your whole cells you know you can reach that level of understanding pretty quickly but mastery comes after seven years and that's also the gene keys talks about the different phases and um there's three seven-year cycles one is your sq the other is your eq and the other is your iq and the 48th gene key talks about the eq cycle which is age seven to 14 so it's like your emotional adequacy your emotional development and that usually stems from the strategies that your parents are using and creating so it's that inner resourcefulness of not only your emotions but your wisdom and stuff like that so we'll dive into that didn't um did anyone have anything that they wanted to um share with with marley like any comments or questions or insights she was just sharing. Um, I guess my, my week was quite similar um, in the fact that I just really recognized how 
many things in my life I am doing half-hearted rather than full, you know, full commitment. And um, even my relationship, I've been uh, married for 20, you know, 23, 24 years. And um, when, when my husband asked me to marry him, um, I didn't feel ready at that time. And, but I didn't have a voice around saying no. And I've, I realized that I, um, and there's always felt a question, am I in the right place? Am I doing things right? Am I supposed to be here? And I realized through doing this work around this commitment, Jean Key, is that I didn't actually ever fully, I didn't fully commit to that. And so it's been quite nice to go back and sort of, um, that I am in the right place, you know, that what I'm experiencing with him is pretty special and um, that I just need to go back and sort of renew that time and take that fear away from that um, that time and just commit to, to myself and my relationship that I'm in as well. I love that. And, and I love that um, instead of being scared and saying like, holy crap, I didn't choose this. Like I, I let someone bulldoze me or whatever, you know, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm going to let, I'm going to just say yes and marry somebody. But um, I believe like any person that comes to you energetically, magnetically, karmically, they're meant to help you with your growth and, and any relationship can be a soulmate relationship. So being in that question, I've had that question before too, particularly when I like started my spiritual journey, I was like, Oh my God, how, how asleep have I been? You know? And um, the same thing with commitments and half heartedness, like saying, because when you say yes to something, you're also saying no to something else. When you're saying no to something, you're saying yes to something else. You have to ask yourself, what do you say no yes to? And I like that you came back and you're like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to like relinquish that fear that I had back in, in the past. And I'm going to commit in the present now because putting all things aside, I, I see how happy I am in this relationship right now and how much growth and how much um, love we have for one another. So that's when you get to realize is it time to end the relationship or, or continue in this new commitment? So you've kind of created this new cycle for yourself. So it's like you're starting this new cycle of commitment for yourself. So that's really cool that you're able to do that. Instead of get scared and run away, you're like, oh crap, what did I, what did I get myself into? You know, because yeah. a lot of people too that are like on this awakening, they end their relationships because it gets really hard, you know, yeah. or they're looking at stuff and they're asking themselves, did I really choose this? Um, mm -hmm. And whether you're conscious or subconscious is it the choice, it's for you. Nothing, you're not a victim of anything. So you're not a victim of your decisions either. And we get to have, we, in every moment, we get to recommit ourselves to our decisions. And that's kind of what bhakti and commitment is, is that in every single moment, it's as if you're committing then and now and now and now and now. And you just continue on this course of commitment. And it's that deepening of that trust in your decisions because it comes from, um, yourself and the more you trust in yourself and the more you have a stronger relationship with yourself the more you don't question the decisions that you make you know so yay I see that Cheryl and Rachel and Alicia got on hey ladies <laughs> thanks for coming on and hanging out it's a girl crew even though we only have one one male in our group <laughs> It's all girls right now. <laughs> um, did anyone else want to share about the 29th or the, the 48th Jane Key and how it's kind of showed up in your life and what you're taking from this? Actually, I'll share a little bit. Okay. Um, I, lit I literally just joined the group like Saturday. And when I saw that these were the, the cards for the week, I was so excited because um, this has been the energy that I've been in. I think that's why I was, I was called to, to join the group um, specifically this week because I was looking at your group and I was like, oh, this would be awesome. Um, but yeah, everything around like commitment to my own inner wisdom has been so prevalent in the last week or so of really kind of getting to a place of embodying that. And the last thing that you were talking about, as far as just trusting my decisions, because my world has been turned upside down. Like I am in the middle of a separation, as you know, and um, yeah, really coming back to me and trusting me and really committing to myself again. So it's, it's, it's pretty profound. So nothing is really kind of, surfaced over the last couple days I'm not really sure how to kind of approach the energy because I saw that you said um that it's more about um doing like a meditation type thing and just allowing 
So that's kind of new to me because I'm previously more analytical and I want to write things down and kind of think things through so that concentration, meditation, contemplation thing. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm not really sure what that looks like. And I'm just trying to allow that's kind of like where I'm at. So I'm, I'm excited to be on the call and just kind of hear from everybody and just embrace all of it. Yay. Well, we're, we're glad you're here and we're here to support you and help you navigate your way. Um, since a lot of, since there's um, some new people, I'll explain what contemplation, concentration, and meditation is. Like, obviously, we all know what meditation is. It's like sitting and allowing and being. And being. It's really like no effort at all, right? And you're just quiet, either observing your thoughts or quieting your mind so that there are no thoughts, depending on like how active your mind is. And we're not here to judge how active our minds are because we can be in meditation while our thoughts are running by us. It's not, that's still meditation. But um, contemplation, and concentration. So concentration is when you're really focused on something and you're taking notes, and it's very analytical and you're like in school and you're trying to learn something. Whereas um, contemplation is between concentration and meditation because it's kind of when you go on autopilot and you're just like doing your own thing and then all of a sudden, ooh, epiphany, ooh, something's dropping in. That's where the contemplation is. It's like, Oh, look at that bird. How does that bird relate to this gene key? Or you're really just present in the now and um, allowing things to come in. And, and it's like the world is allowing you to focus on the things you need to. Whereas when concentration, it's like, I want to dive into this. I want to dive into this. It's very like your own energy directing your energy where contemplation is like surrendering to what life's going to bring you. And if you have, um, if you look at your IQ in your gene key, chart you'll see if you're a line one you're a contemplative mind so that means that that's just naturally where your mind goes if you um and i can i can i can write out the different ways that our mind works and like what line means what because some of them are like you're in either an open mind or you're very like set on your or you're narrow-minded like you'll you'll know how your mind works but it's really interesting to be able to look at that and then see what gene key is associated with it because you can kind of understand once you understand how your mind works you understand how to kind of work with it and sometimes bypass it because sometimes you're going to need to get around that chatter and ego and you're going to need to discern like what's truth and what's coming from my heart and what's coming from my mind. And sometimes when your mind is overactive, it's really hard to understand like where it's coming from because you're like, it's so noisy up here, <laughs> especially if you have a defined head and angi center, um, it could get pretty noisy up there and it's hard to kind of tune that down a little bit. Who else hopped on? Hey, Ryan. Hello. Sorry. Baby. No, you're okay. Sure. You're okay. Um, we just started to dive in. Um, Marley and Monica and Jackie started talking about how the 29th and um, 38th. Is that it? 29th and 38th. Gene Key. Wait, wait. 48th. Not 38th. 48th. 48th Gene Key. Is showing up in their life so we're just kind of talking about it and contemplating it um so when i pulled the cards i immediately felt like particularly because of what energy we're in right now um i felt that really deep commitment um and devotion to ourselves and our own inner wisdom because i know right now with the energy it's so intense that it's bringing up a lot of fears and it's bringing a lot of a lot of passion up and we are, our foundations are kind of being shaken and rocked because what it's needing to do is for you to redevote to yourself, to commit to yourself again and trust yourself. And then you're able to anchor more deeply into yourself and you get to decide what are you going to commit to and what are you going to let go? Because with this portal, you get to be very, um, the Lionsgate portal, which started today and it goes until the 11th, which is Saturday. So this time is really fruitful for us all to be like, discerning what do I want to say yes to, to what do I want to say no to what do I want to commit to and in the in the book the 29 gene key was talking about how you start things is how you end things. so depending on that that level of commitment or half-heartedness like you have to ask yourself is this lighting me up am I excited about doing this am I wanting to go into this wholeheartedly or am I kind of questioning if this is the right path for me because it's, it's not about your actions and like how strong you stay committed to things because even if you're half-hearted, you can still be committed to it. You're just like not wanting to surrender. 
So maybe like the pride or the ego is like, I can't, I can't let this go. Right. Even though I don't really like it. I, I told somebody that I was going to commit to this, but I don't feel the energy. Hey, Allie. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> um, so you're just talking about the 29th Gene Key and devotion and being devoted to ourselves and um, kind of, you know, I think with all relationships, because this does talk about relationships too, and it starts with the relationship with yourself. And for you to be able to strengthen and deepen that relationship with yourself, you begin to trust yourself and then you begin to unlock that reservoir of wisdom within you. And then you become the source of wisdom instead of looking outside of yourself to tell you who you are or what to commit to. Because I think also the reason that we become half-hearted is because we're not trusting ourselves. We're like, I want to say yes to this, but I don't know if this is the right way because we're so hung up on whether it's right or wrong. What if you couldn't get it wrong? What if it was always right? What if, if you decided to say yes to it, it, it was the right decision for you and you didn't have to say, oh crap, this, this is wrong. I think we also need to reevaluate our idea of what success is and what failure is. Because if we believe that we can fail, then um, there's where the fear comes in. But if we just know that there's these lessons and cycles and patterns and things that we can learn from, then we never fail. So if we never fail, then we can never get it wrong. So changing your perspective of that allows you to kind of surrender and lean more into um, your own inner wisdom because you can't really get it wrong, right? Um, did anybody, did anybody get a chance to listen to the, the meditation? Yeah, we, I listened to it this morning. Who's talking? Mm -hmm. I don't know who's talking. Ryan? Ryan no. talking. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because it's dark. I'm like, whose mouth is moving? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I had to grab the baby. Um, yeah, we listened to it this morning. Awesome. And you're 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 a reflector right you're the 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 reflector that joined <laughs> yes that's awesome i'm so glad that you could come and join our group i know that um navigating that 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 level of being open is can be kind of hard at times because it's like what's yours and mine but you probably have a really good understanding of the interconnectedness of everything because you let everything is coming through you and flowing through you so you're pretty, pretty open. So that's awesome. I can't wait to see how you contribute to the group with your own perspective. Because um, if any of you guys know about human design, she has all open centers, which means if you were to have a conversation relationship with her, she plug, you would plug into her completely and she would basically like know your ins and outs. <laughs> so, and there's only 1% or 3% it's a very small percentage of, of the population. And I've read, it's under one, and then I've read about one. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's funny, I've actually met another reflector late, um, lately um, in our little mom group, so there's two of us. Wow, in, that's awesome. A, uh, in our little mom tribe. Yay. It's important to find people that can understand your own particular journey, because it makes mm -hmm. you feel kind of less alone you know mm -hmm. that's why i love doing these kind of things together because it's you know we get to vibe off of each other and we get to listen to other people's perspectives and be open and um i think with these kind of conversations um it's really catalyzing because it 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 helps you have empathy and also see things from another perspective you know oh crystal one percent yep one percent of the population and rachel you you said that you you well, you did too. You listened to the meditation too. So yay, I'm so glad I got, I got that kind of um, visual and download yesterday um, for, for that meditation. And I'm like, oh, this really goes perfectly with what I was pulling when I pulled the cards. I was like, oh, this is like devotion to self, um, bhakti to self, and having that deep trust and relationship with yourself, that commitment, that inner commitment with yourself is what's going to allow you to unlock that inner wisdom with your own divinity, with your own higher self, with your own source, which is everything, you know, and I don't know. And that's what I feel like this lion's gate is, is having that deep commitment to yourself. And you're allowed, you, you, with that anchoring into yourself, everything else falls away. So you get to go through the portal, um, the energetic portal, you know, um, 
metaphorically, physically, energetically, whatever, we go through it and we get to leave behind what doesn't serve us. And that's because we're really understanding who we are. And that's what I love about this gene key journey is because we're understanding, we get to understand ourselves at a deeper level and we get to understand others at a deeper level. So I love it. It's super exciting. Anyone want to questions, add anything? Take me. Oh, oh, <laughs> hey guys, I'm going to match these friends, so I'm just going to hang in in the Gene Keys group. Um, Devotions, the one that I read that, uh, last week that I was telling you about, where I was like, oh my God. Cause, and I thought it was super cool because it's come out, it's come up twice really key since that time. I'm also cooking right now, so I'm going to read I can see something popping. <laughs> um, so devotion was, um, it came up really, really strongly on some calls that I had over this last week and for myself um, because um, it's literally like the, you know, the Siddic state is following the heart's desire and it's such a, a peaceful, loving state that you literally have no judgment of what you're doing anymore. Um, like, it's like, you're literally just going with the flow, like and going with the flow is this looks fun. This looks, that's shiny. I like that. Like, <laughs> so it's not like, it's not distracted, but it's just like loving everything. And what I thought was really interesting is that the Gene Keys book actually said a lot of people who live in this type of devotion to literally their own inner source, but they understand the expressiveness of all source. Like it's, they're like just basically channeling, their own happiness all the time. What happens is they sometimes um, people can see them as like kind of reckless. You know what I mean? Like they're judged because other people are still living in this very shadow state or like an egoic state of like rules and conformity and shoulds and shouldn'ts and wrongs and rights and stuff like that. So they can often be misinterpreted. And so I've been actually observing a lot of my clients with the whole portal and everything who are literally cutting old parts away. You know, or like I have one client who's leaving the marriage, another client who's like, I'm done with this part of my business. It's over. I'm just, I'm dropping it. I was like, okay. She's like, I'm going to go make an announcement. I'm like, let's get grounded. <laughs> but um, I also am like, I recognize a lot of people. A lot of people are like, I'm ready. I'm ready to live in love with my life. I'm not loving this anymore. I want it gone. Right. And that it's really interesting because you have to check in with yourself with your in devotion. Um, you know it. It's a very loving activity. Um, it's done with a lot of compassion, I think. At least that's my judgment on it. But um, whereas, like, if you're not, it comes out of like a fear state. So it's been really interesting to like observe that energy. Um, and it's interesting because, like, the, the gift talk about it being connected between two partners, right? Like, it, and that's the way it relates it, at least. But in devotion, doesn't talk about a partnership with like another person and like um literal like it's like your own uh source energy being felt and expressed at all times i was like oh this is so such a like a me we i again you know is me yeah anyway, i thought i'd share that with everyone see if that provokes some conversation um i remember reading in the cidic frequency because it was talking about um bhakti yoga and it's like the path of the heart or something like that and it talks about i was reading this the 29th city remain remains deeply immersed in human relationships in many tantric practices the devotee visualize him or herself having sex with a divine consort or he or she experiencing alchem alchemical shifts within their body through sustained loving intercourse with another person and that could be another person or that can be like you know you being in love with yourself and, and experiencing that kundalini energy too so i was like oh hmm <laughs> yeah i was like oh who's experienced this <laughs> when people talk about kundalini energy you guys if you've ever heard of that it's um literally it's your own energy it's source energy and it um can be quite orgasmic so <laughs> um when they were talking about it in the gene keys i'm like Hot damn, Gene Keys is talking about that super full body orgasmic Kundalini awakening energy that happens for people. So yeah, people can have it with a partner um, and people can also have it with, with spirits, so like with their own you know, source energy type of thing. And a lot of people have a lot of very psychic stuff that happens after that happens or during it in some cases, so. Yeah, this is a really cool one and um... It is the programming partner of this one is the 30th Jinky. And I, if, mm, I think Alicia 
Cheryl and maybe Rachel were the only ones that were in the group when we did talk about the 30th and that was desire and lightness. So these go hand in hand. So when you're experiencing commitment, you're experiencing lightness. When you're experiencing bhakti, you're experiencing um, rapture. And so rapture is like that extreme, like ecstatic excitement. Lightness is where you kind of um, surrender to the desire because with our, with our, um, astral body it's all about our desire so once we surrender to the fact that we have an astral body we're able to like fall into the commitment to our desires and not be victims of our desires and so when we have that desire to be more committed to ourselves or committed to our partners we unlock that gift frequency instead of feeling like fear around that commitment so we either break it off or we do it out of a fear state so yeah um how it's shown up in my life is I've been playing with this, this gene key for the past 30 days. Yesterday was day 30 of me for, for me of my, um, I was doing a Kundalini yoga practice called a Kriya and this, I've done it for 30 days now. And I, and I started it and created that commitment to myself because I wanted to practice devotion and bhakti to my own self, to my own essence, for no reason whatsoever besides I wanted to commit to myself for an extended period of time. So now we're talking about it. And actually, coincidentally, not coincidentally, I'm doing it for 40 days and the 40th day ends on the 29th gene key when it's active energetically. So I'm like, oh, of course. I didn't like plan it that way, but I was going to track it. And then the last day is when you reach this energy of the 29 gene key, which is sometime in September, I think, I don't know. Um, no, it's in August cause it's, or no, it's 20 days away, 20 days away from yesterday. So it's awesome. And I've been experiencing a lot of, um, when you have that level of devotion, remember when you're committed to yourself and you're devoted to yourself or you're devoted to your business or devoted to your partner, you unlock luck for yourself. And that's very magnetic. So you start drawing in things. I remember when I did it for four days, I became really magnetic. And, and, and I, I skipped the last, like if you, if you don't continue the Kriya and you stick, skip a day, you have to start all over. So I did four days and I fell off the wagon and then all this energy was unleashed to me and I was super magnetic and I launched a course and, and a bunch of people signed up for it. I was like, Whoa, this energy of devotion is no joke because it creates this, this huge life force energy within you that just gets unleashed when you devote to yourself. And that's what this talks about too, is, is all the life force energy available to you. And you have all this energy to do things that you love because when you're in the bhakti state or the devotion state, you can, it's like a lot of namaste. You just see yourself and everything. So there's no, there's no um, separation between you and source or whatever you're devoted to. Cause some people can be devoted to gurus, gods, whatever it is. Um, and it's that, that kind of devotion where your sense of self is gone and all you see is, a, an experience moment by moment by moment with source with the divine so you're constantly in that state of communion with that source energy so it's really it's really cool i have a question yeah so i i just started exploring gene keys and many of them that i've begun to read about have like when you reach the hasidic state it does talk about the dissolution of individuality. And I, I've not read about all of them yet, but is that is that a general trend for the Cidic states of these gene keys? Or is that is that specific to many of them? Because at least the ones that I've read about, like I my life's work is 40. <laughs> I mean that talks about dissolution of self. And then we have 29 that talks about that as well. And I think a few others where it's just like it's different flavors of complete union with the divine. Yes, yeah, exactly. And whenever you unlock acidic state, they're all unlocked. So, so getting into one state is experiencing them all. And um, I've had different experiences <clears throat> where, and we flow through them. Like you, like we can access them. It's not something that has to happen on a collective level or state. Like once you unlock it, it's like, oh yes. I'm there forever. It's not like that. Um, some of them have to reach a higher frequency for it to be permanent and for the whole collective to experience it. Like all of us have to be at that level. Um, but um, certain people, like they were also talking about, like when you get into the acidic frequency, um, even for a moment, it 
it will pull like 10,000 or some obscene number of people out of the shadow to the gift. So one person going into the city pulls 10,000 into the gift. Um, I think that's the number. I, I Don't quote me because it's in the book somewhere. I don't know where it is. Um, but it is definitely all the cities. And there is, there is that dissolution of self because if you think about it, reaching that level of unity, which is one of the gene keys or universal love, which is the other gene key, um, it's, there is no separation. And I think the core wound that all of us experience is separation. And if you look into the 22nd gene key, you can look at the other core wounds. I think there's, um, uh, doesn't matter. None of them are coming to my mind, so they don't matter. <laughs> so, well, right now for this conversation, um, separation is the biggest one and that's what we chose. We chose to come here to experience separation. And when you reach the Cidic state, you decide to leave this sense of self behind so that you can go back to source. So there is no separation there. Whereas when you're in the gift frequency, you still have that sense of self, but you're putting that sense of self towards service, you know? So it goes from you know, service to yourself, to, to altruism. And, and you understand like with, with um, devotion and bhakti, the 29th gene key, it talks about how these people are so in service to others because they see no separation. So giving to another is giving to themselves. So that's where that, that, that loss of self or not loss that you choose to, to relinquish that so that you can experience that love just everywhere in all your actions. And so that's why those people seem a little reckless because they do things for love, for the glory of love. And, and they're, they're very devoted to their, you can be devoted to a person, you can be devoted to a mission, you can be devoted to your business, to whatever. It's just, you reach that level where there's no separation. And so when you give to them, you give to yourselves and you experience that love. And you can have that. That's, this is part of the code on ring of union. Um, the glory of love alley. Yeah, I hear that song all the time. Um, Oh, came here for love. Uh, I'm just reading the chat box. So the ring of union and each gene key has a codon ring that it's part of. And these codon rings are part of like an alchemical family that share the same amino acid usually. And with those codon rings, they come together to catalyze shifts in our DNA. And when those shifts start to occur, we start to experience things at a different frequency, a different perspective. And that's where we can attain different cytic states. And so the ring of union is all about moving towards this idea of the sacred couple or the sacred union. And that's where two people come together and they start to share auras and two become one. So we're starting to understand what it is to merge with source and merge with anything, everything through merging with another, you know, and, and obviously that can happen with, with ourselves and that devotion and commitment to ourselves and really merging with our higher self and merging with our source essence within ourselves and, 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 and starting to completely channel our higher self and act and live in that way. But when we are devoted and committed to someone in a relationship, we're able to experience that union with them too, because then you start understanding that giving to them is giving to yourself and, and everything is shared. Um, but I think there's a lot of fear around that with some with some people because you're like your sense of self is 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 dissolving into the other person and and some people can feel the shadow state of like oh i'm trapped i'm oppressed i'm losing my freedom i'm using my i'm losing my individuality or my sovereignty and that's not the case because where we came from we were source we were one and that some people aren't ready for that super abundance that unity that universal love um and merging into that and that's okay because we all came here for a different experience and we get to choose. So. Um, Ashley, just my phone's on 1% and it doesn't seem to be charging very well. So if I drop out, I'll just catch the recording. So yeah, thank you. I'm enjoying it so far. Yay. Oh, I'm glad that you're enjoying it. And if you, if yeah. you feel like you want to add anything, definitely. Pop yeah. in. Um, it's okay that you guys are all observing, seeing how, this is working and you don't have to feel like you have to talk. Um, you'll get to a point where you're like, Oh my God, this GNK, I have so much to talk about it because it really will sink into you. Um, does anyone have any questions about the gene keys um, that me or someone else can offer insight into? Rachel, your little smiley, Rachel. <laughs> Do you want to say anything, Rachel? Nope. She's gone. <laughs> oh, there she is. Um, and what about the, like when you're saying, you know, that commitment to self, like I'll go like four days where I'll do something uh, and then I do fall off the wagon. Like what, a, how do you, 
how do you shift through that? I think that the reason that um, I'm going to remember how like I, I was saying, oh, um, Gene Key, I think I was saying Gene Key, thir is it, was it 38? I was, I was mentioning, oh yeah, I was like Gene Key 38 and I accidentally said that and it was actually 48. Well, 38 is struggle, perseverance, honor. I knew I said that Gene Key for a reason. The reason we fall off the wagon is because we're not aligning with that higher purpose anymore. So the, the Gene Key 38, the reason that it plays with this 29th Gene Key is because um, when you are aligned with that purpose, that higher purpose for why you're doing something, you regain that commitment. If you can't remember why you're doing what you're doing, it becomes a struggle and then you fall off the wagon and you're not committed anymore and you're half-hearted. So it's really important for why, while you're doing stuff to continually keep that mantra of what's the purpose of this? You know, if the purpose is simple and it's like, I just want to have fun, I want to have fun and, and I want to live in joy and I want to, to, to love my life and it becomes a chore and not fun for you. It's either like, how can you shift your perspective to make it fun or has it run its course? Like, is the cycle over and it's time to shift into something else? So it's really being in tune with that cycle and being like, am I still aligned with my vision, my purpose, why I'm here living life the way that I am? Or is it just that I've created this shadow frequency that I need to pop out of? So you constantly need to ask yourself, what frequency am I hanging in? You know? So that's important yeah, yeah. to have that awareness. So purpose, redefining and reinstating and anchoring into that purpose will allow you to keep going because there's times when I'm doing my Kriya and I'm in it doing it for like 11 minutes and I'm like this sucks I don't want to do this anymore and then I'll like how can I make this fun so I've and and I know that they say like oh you're supposed to like keep your hands above your head and there's a way to do it and I'm like I don't care like I'm doing this for fun so I've got up and like danced around and made it fun because I'm like I'd rather have fun with it than follow these rules like we make our own rules so if the reason that I'm doing this is for devotion to myself then I'm going to make it fun you know and who rules like what about these rules like who made these rules and sometimes with half-heartedness commitment and devotion asking yourself did you say yes for you or did you say yes for someone else and if you don't have a devotion or commitment to that other person then you need to ask yourself, like, why are you, why are you in this self-sacrifice mode? Or how can you sh shift your perspective? It's all about that aligning with that higher purpose and commitment and devotion and, and understanding why you said yes in the first place. Because sometimes we get excited and especially with, if you're familiar with human design, with your open centers, if they're plugging into an open center and you're feeling their excitement and you're feeling their emotion, you could say yes prematurely because you're riding their wave their emotion and then you say yes and then you've committed to it and now you're like i can't say no because i don't want to disappoint them and so you just continue on and it's a struggle because the purpose isn't aligned with you it's aligned with them so always asking yourself like is this a yes for me for my joy for my excitement or is this a yes because i'm devoted and committed to this person and i love them and i'm doing it because they asked me and i can make it fun so just asking yourself those questions allows it to be easier. Because the gate 29 in, G, in human design is called, um, I think it's the gate of saying yes, the, something like that. Can't remember, but it has a lot to do with commitments. And are you, when you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something else. When you're saying no to something, you're saying yes to something else. And a lot of people who have this gate struggle with commitments because they're either saying yes to everything or they're saying no to everything and they don't want to commit. So ask yourself, like, what's your pattern? Do you say yes to everything? Do you say no to everything? Are you scared of commitment? And really facing that fear head on. Bye, Ali. <laughs> um, facing that fear head on and um, moving through it because what, what is there to fear in commitment? It's only if we're holding on tightly to that active commitment that we don't allow it to die when it needs to or complete its cycle. It's all about cycles. And the cycle can last an hour, a day, seven years. You don't know. In the GP book, it talked about um, that commitment being such a societal pressure. Like that whole word commitment has almost been distorted 
I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> That's another thing to think about is our response to certain words because they have been conditioned to mean some different things. Like we're going to need to, if we're wanting to change our perspective of things, we're going to need to regain neutrality with certain stuff because society has put such a charge on different words and different expectations on things. And we're needing to just align with ourselves. And that's what this devotion and inner commitment is, is to yourself so that you get to define what these words mean to you. And you get like, this life is about meaning. When you're in the Cidic state, everything's neutral. Literally, like when, um, if you've ever experienced the Cidic state, and you can confuse the Cidic state with the shadow state, it's all about perception because it's not a stair step at all. It's shadow, gift, and when the shadow and gift merge together, um, that is what the city is. It's, 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 um, bye Ryan. Um, it's acceptance of the shadow and acceptance of the gift and then they merge together to create the city so sometimes we get confused with the shadow because for example the shadow of confusion which is the 64th jinky this is the one that i've consciously experienced the city in um which is illumination so the shadow of confusion you're looking around like why is there no activity what's going on why can't i pull anything why does it seem so confusing to me and what lies in that energy is actually illumination. And it's so interesting that you can either choose to experience the shadow of confusion and be confused and be like, I can't pull anything from this. It literally feels like nothingness. There's no answers. There's no nothing. And that's because uh, that's illumination. In the Cidic, there's no frequent. It's, it's like not an up and down thing. It's, it's like a, a, a hum, like, hmm, and it's very white. And you can't pick anything out of it. It's simply a being state. And in all of those city states, it's about being. Being in your energy, being in the moment, and being neutral. It's, it's like extreme neutrality. Like nothing means anything. And you're just sitting there peaceful, loving, and calm. And it's a crazy energy to be in. Because <laughs> you're like, there's no activity here. And our restless souls are like, make activity find something to do. And we always shift ourselves out of the being state. So that's what happens in the acidic state is it's being. Mm. Alicia. That's the energy I was in most of today. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are experiencing neutrality. Um, the acidic state. It's, it's this like nothing means anything and it's very neutral. And then we start judging it and we're like, why am I in a funk? But it's not a funk. You're just experiencing neutrality, which is what source experiences because unconditional love is not saying this is right, this is wrong. It's very neutral because it's unconditional. So every experience is a neutral experience. We just decide what we want to give meaning to each thing, right? And that's what the shadow does is the shadow's judgment and the shadow's like, this is wrong. I am scared. I am angry. I am in, in a repressive energy, I'm in a reactive energy. And that's because we're reacting to the energy instead of just being with it and having that neutrality in it. Um, does anyone have any questions? I know that, um, Marley, you asked about master keys. I kept hearing it, it was master key, master key. And I was like, I won't forget. <laughs> I will not forget. Um, so actually, the only thing that I really know about master keys is because it's not written about. It's something that I'm pulling through and something that I'm getting piece by piece. So with the gene keys, you know how there's 64 gene keys? Well, instead of having 64, it's one. G, one key that is your master key that unlocks this potential and unlocks things for you. And it's not about discerning like, which gene key do I need to use to unlock what? It's about consistently using the same master key to bring your awareness to your divine, to yourself, to the potential and possibilities in the situation. So um, I've had a couple experiences with bringing people's awareness to their master keys. And you can bring your awareness to your master key right now. It's literally how I see it and is as a key 
like above someone's head. Like if I'm, I'm looking in my mind's eye, I'll see. And you, I don't know, it just depends on if you're feeling stuff, if you see stuff, if you hear stuff, it just depends on which sense is more predominant for you or if it's just about trust. Like it's literally bringing your awareness to that key and bringing it into your being. It's kind of like, oh, it's separate now. And then it's about bringing it through your crown and putting it in whatever, wherever it needs to go, your throat. Because in the moment, it will unlock different parts of you because it's like custom to you. No one can take that key. You're never separate from it. It's just about bringing your awareness to it. And it does unlock different things. And I'm still playing with it and understanding it. But I, do, I did post a meditation for it in the group. And we did mention it on a previous call. So I'll post that meditation again so you guys can experience the master key. I know that it's, I'm not going to be talking about gene keys forever. I'm bringing through these master keys or master key. I have no idea. So it's not something that I know a ton about. I'm just trying to be present and regardless of what other people get for it. Like we're talking about the 48th and the 29th gene key. I'm committed to bringing forth this knowledge that is coming through me. And it is wisdom that is deep within me. So when somebody is connecting to me and telling me, oh, I can see your, I can see your master keys and you're going to do this, this, and this with it, I really use my discernment because if I haven't pulled it out of my well, my wisdom, then I know that it's not time yet. Because so many people can connect to me and kind of have their own experience and bring their own stuff. And I'm fine because I would love to hear it from other people because I feel like a lot of people have different pieces to our puzzle but it hasn't connected for me yet. I haven't, I haven't downloaded it yet. It's coming in pieces and I'm starting to understanding it more and more, but I feel like I need to put a devotion and commitment towards it because I haven't, I've just been waiting. Like, are you going to come? So like recently with this whole Lionsgate thing, I'm like, I'm going to channel these master keys and I'm going to understand them because I want to, and I'm feeling that pull. So you can tap into your own master key and pull it down and see what it happens. I was on a call once with somebody and um, she's a reflector too. Um, and I was seeing the key. Like this started a while back where I would see keys above people's heads and I'm like, what is that? And then I bring their awareness to it and we would plug in and, and, and put it somewhere. So for this girl in particular, when she did it and it's custom for everyone, like you're going to have your own experience. Like, I think, Marley, you integrated your master key. That's what it felt like. It felt like it was one thing. It wasn't like individual, it was like one big energy that was like, boom, unlocking something for you. So for her, when we integrated that, she she's a reflector so she and she feels a lot. She's clairsentient. So she was feeling it in different parts of her body. And after that, she downloaded a whole book to write. And then she, um, uh, and then she just signed with a, what's it called? Some, an editor, I think it's an editor or a publisher, something like that. And her book's going to be out soon. So it's crazy. And it came super fast. So you don't put any expectations on what it's going to do. It's going to, to do whatever it needs to do. Um, Alicia says that um, my master key, key plays with my spine bones a lot. Isn't your, um, isn't it, isn't one of your gene keys like the the purpose sphere it doesn't have to do with structure or something like that because I know that in the purpose sphere it's talks about like the spine or the blood or the fluids or whatever I I don't remember which one yours is Alicia um and I don't I think mine is physicality bones I don't remember um because I'm a line one down there gene key purpose is stillness but what's your line number one two three four Okay, you have the channel structure. Um, and then this other girl, when I first was learning about master keys, she, I saw the key and we had a call and I was just playing with it and she put it in her throat. And then she went through this whole shamanic journey of being in like a cocoon and then emerging as like a butterfly. And, and then her psychic business just blew up. If you guys have heard of Anita Garza, I don't know if you guys have heard of her, but, um, we had a, we had a call and it was, it was crazy. We were just like contemplating it. And I would, and I was following her along on the journey and we were seeing like, okay, maybe this means this. And it was so cool to witness her whole journey. Cause it lasted a couple of weeks. Like she was in, she had it, the master key brought her to her, her, the awareness that she was in a cocoon. And then she was able to decide whether she wanted to step out or not. And then she launched her business and, and 
and then her psychic gifts started to explode. So it was awesome. So um, someone else has told me that these completely bypass the mind or something and it does something to your chakras and then it's like a tool for awakening so I don't know <laughs> I'm curious to see what you guys experience thank you for sharing all of that um I've been trying to I have been exploring the energy of the master key that was activated in my dream and and it's it's tough because I, I literally started exploring gene keys like a week ago. <laughs> so I don't know what's new, like being new to something versus like what's what's the energy of of the essence of of the gene keys that's coming through. So I'm I'm exploring that. But for me, like it was activated in the dream, as I told you, and it just I feel like I've been activated in waking life as well. Um, it feels like opalescent energy, like, and I see it that way too. And when I was doing the master key integration meditation that you sent to me, it, I saw it as opalescent rainbow energy. And currently it feels like to me that it could be helping me to show not that all of the gene keys are separate but that they're all kind of the same and that's how I'm feeling it is like sensing the the commonalities between all of the flavors of the gene keys mm -hmm. but again I don't know I mean I haven't even <laughs> I haven't read all about all of the gene keys I haven't experienced and contemplated very deeply because I'm so new but that's just currently what it feels like to me is experiencing them all simultaneously in energy that does transcend conscious thought and because of that they're no longer in their separate labels it's like all together at once mm -hmm. and it's like makes sense with like the rainbow since all the colors are together and that reminds me of the 47th gene key um which talks about the rainbow body so I would read the city of the 47th gene key, it's transfiguration. And it's where I think that you're you're activating your rainbow body, you know, and that's what is going to start transmuting these denser, lower aspects to allow more light to fill your body and, and start creating that mutation. So over time, we vibrate higher and um, we're moving towards becoming pure light. Like that's where our evolution is going, not needing the skin or like in the... 22nd or no the 55th 22nd or 55th gene key it talks about the future human being and it talks about our skin becoming transparent us not needing to have hair not needing salt like there's so many things that are starting to mutate so it seems like you are coming into that um rainbow body and Megan, who's in this group, Megan Covington, she works a lot with this rainbow energy and she sees a lot of things in light. So, um, and she knows all the different rays. Like you're talking about opalescence. There's like opalescent, um, uh, I don't know. The sacred seals talks about it. Each of the different sacred seals, which is like an upgrade from this book. It's like, you can go into this book. And then if you're wanting to go deeper, deeper, there's a process called the seven sacred seals. And they're like invocations that open up these different portals that allow you to transcend your suffering and, and invite grace into your life. They each correspond to a different chakra, a different core wound and a different light color. And one of them is that, I think they call it luminescence, which is the rainbow one but you're talking about opalescence. And I had another experience with this, with one of my friends earlier. She, um, she experienced her soul with an opalescent energy. Like that's how, like, you know how people talk about auras? Well, her soul came to her with the opalescent energy. So it's interesting that you're bringing this up again. So I don't know, rainbow body, your soul, maybe that's your soul. And I don't know, you know, and, and you'll, you, it'll uncover and illuminate more, but I feel like you're going through this transmutation process, you know, and that's why your life is shifting too, is because it catalyzed energetically. So obviously when things happen on an energetic level, they start to affect it physically. And then your whole life mirrors that internal awakening. So I'm interested to see what happens in your life. 
<laughs> with that shift coming, you know? Me too. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for all of those insights. Yeah, no problem. Um, let's see, we've still got Monica, Alicia, Cheryl. Did you guys want to say anything? Oh, um, line three. Alicia. I don't remember what line three is, Alicia. I don't even know why I asked you. I'm like, if she tells me which line, I, I'll have to go bust out my book. Oh, yeah, and there's other supplemental books. Um, if you're really new to it, don't get the other books. Like, really just start to contemplate this. If you want to dive deeper, there's um, different books that Richard Rudd has created. It's actually a program, but I don't use the program. I just use the books. They talk about the lines, so you can go into the line numbers. And I posted a, a, a document in our group that talks about them, so you can kind of get the general message behind them. So Richard Rudd likes to make things super <laughs> lengthy, in-depth, and complicated. And that's why I feel like the master keys are starting to come through is because we're wanting more simplicity. Like, this is so cool to be able to, like, look at your shadows. But what if we didn't have to do all this shadow work? What if, if we just focused on love and allowed and surrendered to that, if our light shines so bright that it would just dissolve and transmute all that, those patterns? Like, why do we, is there a belief somewhere that we have to do shadow work? Is there a belief that we have to suffer? Is there a belief, like, what if it could just be like this? What if we trusted so deeply in ourselves that the shift could just come like that? Because that's true devotion. And maybe that's why this is coming up is because if you have true devotion and trust in, and commitment to yourself, then if you believe it so, you don't waver at all. And that's why I believe that, like, when I started my spiritual journey and I was comparing things to Jesus, um, because I moved out of, like, religion to spirituality, I was like, if Jesus can do it, I can do it. Jesus is the son of God. I'm a daughter of God. Or, and then I believe, oh, I am God. So guess what? We can do anything. So as long as your belief is really strong and you trust in that belief that you can do anything and you believe in anything, why can't things just happen like that? And that's, you know, why not? And I feel like wonder and questioning and play go hand in hand. Like this is not supposed to be serious. And I know that shadow work can be really serious. And why do we have to go through that? And why does it have to be complicated? I feel like we're also dissolving and, and um, combining and uniting so that we, we don't need all these complicated processes. Like, oh, let me talk to you about the seven chakras, the 144 chakras. And that's so freaking complicated. I don't want to know all that stuff. I just want to understand my unity and my wholeness and allow that wholeness to shift and transform everything. If it's all about coming to your source and, and having awareness to your inner divinity and your inner essence and, and letting that light transmute everything, why do we have to know the process? Our mind wants to know the process. So let's surrender that and just allow that transfiguration to happen because we're bringing our awareness to our light and our love and not this, this denser stuff. It's about that doesn't mean to bypass the body and bypass the experience. It means to love and embrace everything unconditionally and allow that love to transmute your whole experience into a loving experience instead of feeling like we have to go through suffering or, you know, whatever. So. Yeah, I have, I definitely have resistance to the idea that it must take seven years for full integration, like that's something I'm like, oh, so you could just wait seven years and expect it to like any, like why, like what, why can't it happen faster or slower? So okay. that's something I have like big resistance to. Here's my <laughs> view on that because it's written in the book and I'm like, okay, Richard, think about it this way. If you were a victim of your body and your cells, your cells, take seven years to regenerate. So that means you're at the mercy of the timeline of your cells. But because Gene Keys is about reprogramming your cells, you can literally tell your cells, guess what? Time doesn't matter. There is no time. So do it now. And then it does it. And I've seen shifts and experienced shifts like that because you get into the sense of timelessness. And it doesn't matter. And seven years means seven seconds. And you're like, oh, there we go. <laughs> So you're right to have that resistance because I feel like a lot of us are, and it's not impatience, it's timelessness. We are aligned with timelessness. It's not that I want it to happen now. It's that 
why can't it happen now? Time is an illusion. So if you believe that, then of course you can shift it like that, you know? So keep, keep thinking that way and keep questioning because it's all about what feels good in our body. Like what, and not necessarily our body, like what feels right in our soul. And that's what's going to guide and direct us. So if you feel like seven years, like why seven years, you know? And I feel like some people want to wear that as a badge of honor. Like, hey, I have mastered this. It has been seven years for me. I am now a master. It's like, hi, no. Anybody can be masters because it's all about definition to yourself. So I am a master. I'm a master right now. And if you have the 16th gene key, you know that very intrinsically. And I think you have that 16th gene key, right? Yeah. Isn't it your life's work? I will check. Um, it's not my life's work, I don't think. Or your purpose. Oh, it is my life's work. <laughs> my purpose is 40. My life's work is 16. <laughs> yeah. So being able to tap into, because that 16 is all about mastery. And to reach that civic level is to understand, like, and it talks about seven years there, too. But I have only been studying Gene Keys for two years, and I already feel like I'm done. I'm ready to bring in everything. Because... Think about it this way. Mastery and reading this stuff is all about um, that level of understanding in your mind. But if you bypass your mind and you, and you are able to channel and access that wisdom, because the gene keys are living, breathing, energies, and you can access them and have the wisdom in the moment. You don't have to be recalling through your mind and your brain. You know, it's already in your cells. You already have access to that well of knowledge. So... Why, why does it take seven years to match things? Why, you know, I don't know. And I think at some, cause I'm thinking about like, oh, people that go to get their doctorate. I don't know if I would trust somebody um, to operate on me if they didn't go to school and they're like, I'm just using my intuition. <laughs> I'd be like, ah, oh. <laughs> you know, that's, that's like, what is the degree of trust that I have in that person but we're going to move towards that like people are already talking about putting chips in people's minds to automatically download that knowledge you don't need to put chips in your mind you just simply need to anchor into your own wisdom and you can unleash all the answers because if we know that we're connected and if the energy and the knowledge is out there it's just simply picking it out of the air and being like now i know how to talk about i don't know i just heard liposuction <laughs> now i know how to do liposuction <laughs> oh man so, cool. Keep questioning and sharing those. Like, I don't believe, I want to hear more of that. Like, that's how we stir the pot and that's how we bring in new, you know, because it's all about evolution and it's about mutation. So we need to mutate our beliefs and align with something that is in, you know, integrity and alignment and truth with who we are. And if we don't believe something, then we get to change it we don't resonate with something, we get to change it. So, <sighs> anyone want to add anything before we get off? Before we got on the call, I was like vibrating. I'm like, I don't know if I'm anxious, excited, or if I'm getting some kind of download. Like I was just like, oh my God, I can't handle this energy right now. And it's been way stronger with Lionsgate. Which, why do we have to wait for Lionsgate to feel this kind of energy? <laughs> they have it, access to it all the time. It's just, it gives us these opportunities to play with time linearly and be like, oh, guess I got to wait till next Lionsgate. Or you just call that energy in now, you know? I don't know. We're just playing. We're just playing with these contemplations and deciding what we want our reality to be like so we're conscious we're actually <laughs> what? I was gonna ask if you can just kind of back backtrack a little bit because I mean I can totally understand the timelessness stuff and um really kind of understand that we have like these beliefs that we formed but um I don't know if it's just my monkey mind but I'm I'm, I'm just being drawn to something that I wrote in my journal is just the relationship with myself and trusting myself like I feel like um, I can believe all that stuff, but then it's like coming back to me. Like, what is, what does that look like? I don't know if you can expand on that. I don't even know if I have a question or what, but. Um, You're waiting for the epiphany to drop in because right now it's at a mind level and the way that we're able to get it and really feel it is when it drops into your heart. 
but I feel like it hasn't dropped into your heart yet because it makes sense. I've had, that's how my process goes too. I really understand it and I can preach it and verbatim spit it out at a mind level. But um, when it hits your heart, you're like, holy crap. And I've had my friends and I've been like, oh my God, this just happened and I understand this. And they're like, we've been talking about this for like five months. And I'm like, yeah, but now I understand it at like a heart level. <laughs> so that's just where you're at. Like it's, it's, it's here and it's permeating and it's marinating and you're like, should I let this in and make it in my belief? Should I let it in and bring it into my heart or uh, and not even bring it in? It's like, do I want my heart to, it's a, it's a wall too. We create these walls because we're scared of that belief. We're like, oh, I don't know if I want that to be my belief or we're waiting for the epiphany to drop in. You know, it's like, I need, sometimes we need our, it to make sense in our mind. Like for me, I need a, I like, I think for you too, cause you're analytical and logical, it needs to make sense on a mind level before you trust your intuition. Like that's where my mind goes to is I'm not going to trust my intuition until it makes sense on a logical level. And I, it's been, I've seen that in my, I like printed out like this human design report that was from another page. And that's what it said my core wound was. And I would be willing to bet your core wound is the same thing. I'm not going to trust my intuition unless it makes sense on a logical level. So you keep looking for it to make sense on a logical level. And I think once your mind goes like, click, it, it's like the chute opens and it allows that to drop into your heart. But it's like still locked because you're like, no, I will not open the chute. No, I will not let that into my heart. Because I can feel stuff in my heart. Like I feel like that pain in my heart right now because it feels like, no, 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 no. It's like you got to open your heart to that belief and then it drops in. So that's where you're at. That's just where it is. And it drops in when it drops in. And that, these kind of conversations, it's like, you have to hear it in a certain way. It has to be formed in sentences in a certain way. And that's how it has always been for me. Someone will say, like my, like Allie, who was on before, she'll say something to me and it won't hit. And then I'll talk to her again. And maybe she'll say it in a different way. And I'll be like, oh my God. And she's like, I told you that like two weeks ago. I'm like, I didn't hear it in the right way. <laughs> so that could be how it is for you. And that's why these kind of conscious conversations help because you're hearing those different perspectives and your mind is like, yeah, okay, I can, I can go with that. Because when we get stuck in our mind, we put ourselves in a box. But when we open our mind, the new possibilities and potential and insights and epiphanies come in and it's in the gaps of our awareness. Like read the addiction to silence one. I can't remember if that one's 26. I think it's 26. That one talks about the gaps. And I feel like if we're in our minds a lot, not 26. I don't know which one it is. 24. 24. It's 24. Um, it talks about the gaps in your awareness. So between thoughts, there's this gap. And in that gap of silence is where the epiphany drops in. So if you're too focused on concentrating, your mind is not loose. So there is no epiphany that can come in. So you were talking about, oh, what's the difference between concentration, contemplation, and meditation? You need to be in contemplation for epiphany to drop in. And that's when you release and surrender and say, I'm open to whatever wants to come through. And then life will kind of guide you to the conversations or things like, um, are you familiar with like energy activations too, right? Yeah. Activate the gift. Like go into the gene key and be like, that's simply bringing your awareness to it and saying like creator, it is commanded to activate the gift of invention or I activate the gift of invention. And then you'll be able to get those epiphanies or I activate the gift of insight, epiphany. That's, and I think that in the other group in your life by design, we have an activation that I put for free. That was to activate the gift of um, insight and epiphany. So, so to bring in those epiphanies and that is, I mean, just practice with that and kind of loosen your grip on like, I need to understand it now. Cause that's like grasping. Whereas contemplation is like, show me the way. And versus like, tell me the answer, <laughs> you know? So yeah. yeah. Any more questions or you okay for now? <laughs> One more. We have one more. Whoever grabs it. Who wants the question? I can feel it. It's here. <laughs> it's Alicia? <laughs> yeah. I feel it. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because I was just reading in the book too and I was like, I have a question, but I was on mute. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, can you talk about resourcefulness? Um, Because that one talks, because my daughter has that at least once in her chart. Actually, I think she has it twice. I think it's in her evolution and location. Um, And it talks about how parents play a huge role in that. So I'm just curious to hear um, how it comes for you. Um, I was like looking at my book, but I feel like that's not. So for parenting, if she has that twice, that's really linked to her EQ, her emotions, and how you deal with your emotions allows her insight into how she can deal with her emotions. So if you repress them, if you have a particular way you do it, or your husband, your aura is what is programming her resourcefulness. So that's why it's really important for us parents to be aware and conscious of how we are, you know, mastering ourselves. Because it's all about self-mastery. But as kids, they're looking to somebody for guidance. And so you're here to teach her resourcefulness, which means like you're not stuck in a pattern. You're not stuck in a rut. You're not a victim of anything. Here are all your tools. Here's how you find the wisdom and resourcefulness for yourself. Because that one's all about doing with what you have. Instead of seeking like somebody fixes for that will create codependent relationships, right? She's like, I don't have the answers. Someone tell me the answer. Like how we normally get on this spiritual journey, we go through a period of time where we're like, where's the guru? Where's my guru? Someone tell me who I am. Somebody tell me what to do because I'm so scared in my own soul or in my own skin that I'm not trusting my soul. And you need to teach her to trust her soul and to observe her Mm -hmm. emotions instead of be victims of her emotions and even victims of her wisdom or inadequacy. Because that one, in that gene key, it talks about, and Austin has this as, one of his main four ones, my son, Austin. And I'm very conscious of how I talk to him because you don't want to help instill an idea of inadequacy in them. So the way that you talk to her and the way that she needs to feel like she has tons of tools at her fingertips that are within her, that's resourceless. Inadequacy means you don't know because that's the gate of depth. So some people are continuous learners. They feel like they can't have enough certificates. They feel like they can't know enough things. So they're constantly searching outside of themselves to make themselves feel worthy and adequate where we have everything we need within ourselves. So the more you teach her to be like that inward turner and, and knowing everything is inside of her, Mm -hmm. the more she's going to lean into that and feel resourceful and find her well of wisdom. Austin talks about it as, as a literal well. He's like, oh, you just go into your well. And I'm like, that's what the book says too. Um, Because it's literally you finding your well. You're finding your wisdom. And that's like deep within your soul. And it's kind of like, like in the meditation, it's like the key that your higher self was giving to you. Because she's going to show you like, where's that wisdom? And you can find it in different parts of you. Or like going to the same place to seek the wisdom. She needs to find that place of, of, I'm hearing solitude and neutrality. Is she an emotional authority? Um, let me look. I feel like she, I don't know. I think she has emotions, like, defined center, but let me see if I can pull up her chart really quick. Because if she has a defined, defined center, she's going to be, like, the, like, that part of her resourcefulness is about her mastering her emotions. Mm. Yeah, I don't have, I just have her gene keys, not her human design right now, but yeah, I know she is defined center, and I'm, I'm open. And emotions has been a big thing. So we work a lot on like activities for resourcefulness and like mind, but we haven't like emotions is something that <laughs> we definitely How old is she? get to grow in. She's four. Okay. You have a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah. Seven. I think it's seven to 14. That's when the stuff is triggered in us to be like, okay, now that you understand how to be a soul in a body and how to figure out what you love, now you get to decide your emotions and how to handle those, you know? And you have to see like, as far as like resourcefulness and wisdom, since she has it popping up twice in her list, it's not in her EQ. So combine that 48 gene key with her EQ, whatever her EQ is, because that's the theme of her emotional turmoil. That's the theme of her emotions. And you need to teach her about resourcefulness to, to get over that hump of that victim mindset or the gift frequency in that sphere of EQ. Cause it's not, it's not the um, 48. Yeah, so she's got 32 in her EQ. So failure, okay. um, mm-hmm. preservation. Yep. So you're going to 
she's going to be discovering what she wants to preserve in her life, like what she wants to fight for, what she wants to live for, what she wants to preserve. And if that's preserving, it's preserving something about emotion. So like emotional experiences, like emotional equanimity, like what about her emotions is she wanting to preserve? The rawness of them, like, like starting to look at that and be like, how is she handling her emotions? And um, how, how does she like interpret her emotions as, um, being a hindrance or an interference and like I'm failing because I can't get my emotions in check and feeling a victim of your emotions and then like that's also your idea the victim of your idea of success so how does she define successful emotional experiences awesome. it's kind of deep but yeah. <laughs> that's no, good. That's I'm pulling out of it now yeah thank you Ashley yeah anyone else I feel like this discussion is, is opening a lot in me. So I really appreciate being here um, because I remembered I have Gene Key 48 in my culture sphere. And I feel like, you know, my, my whole wondering about Gene Keys is like, uh, like spirits told me <clears throat> I'm gonna start really integrating this into my work soon. But of course I feel inadequate about it. Like, oh, I just started, who am I to do this? I haven't had the seven years <laughs> or whatever. Um, and then as I was just listening to that conversation and you know, uh, Gene Key 48, especially being highlighted in years seven through 14, I realized I had a major chronic illness that started at age 14 and it was totally hugely linked to inadequacy that I'd learned from my father. And of course it's, it's so, it's like, it's deep. It, it, the, I think my illness is like the, the reason for my eventual spiritual awakening. And it taught me how to be a healer by learning how to heal myself and all of that. And of course I took other trainings too, but it's like it's so it's so deep there and so it's it's I'm really in awe of how this is opening and of course there is a gift in the shadow and I'm I'm like epiphanies all over the place so thank you all yeah. <laughs> I love that I love what these kind of discussions do because it's we're always drawn for a reason and there's always fruitful conversations and even if we don't get to speak something in the conversation is for us. Like, even though like I'm talking to Alicia, you like were able to pull something like, that's how it always is. Like, there's always a resonance in the journey that we're all experiencing and an overlap. And when I, when you came on and well, I don't know what we were talking about, but I was like visualizing things like, when we were, oh, it was when we were talking about the master keys. And I saw, not, I don't know if you're going to be doing the master keys, but I saw like our paths parallel. And I was like, oh, she's doing, she's going to be doing this too. So, and especially when you like were activated, I was like, uh, she's, I don't know. Do you work with ascended masters or anything like that? Or, or I, I do. I'm, um, primarily my business. So I, what I do is I help people cultivate a soul aligned business. And my work really starts with the Akashic records. So I look at their soul, I clear some stuff, I help them figure that out. And of course, Gene keys are totally parallel to the findings in the Akashic Records soul profile. They're totally compatible. And I feel like when I finally dove into Gene keys last Thursday and then had that activation this weekend, I was like, oh, oh, this is changing everything in my career, but not really. It's not changing anything at all. It's just a deepening. And I, I feel the same way as you, like, oh, this is going to be a part of my work. It's going to be big. It's going to be real soon and then of course the inadequacy is like oh god <laughs> yeah. oh my god totally and you're and that's in your culture so it's it's your tribe you're going to be teaching people about their own inner wisdom and it's your inadequacy that will prevent you your feelings of inadequacy that will prevent you from um manifesting abundance and prosperity in your life so if you feel inadequate then you will be inadequate you know and so it's about you finding that well of wisdom within yourself and then people are going to be magnetized to you for you to help them find their inner well, you know, because it's during your culture sphere. Cause that always defines my culture sphere is about celebration and being in the moment. So I'm here to teach people how to be, and you're here to teach people how to find that wisdom and bring it. And, you know, especially in business, like if you're teaching people about soul aligned businesses, it's like, 
what is your what are you cultivating what is your business aligned with and and where what wisdom are you drawing from like because they're there we're all here to share certain types of wisdom that aligns with because this is a filter this body is a filter and like the wisdom comes out how it comes out and we're aligned with certain like some people resonate with the akashic record some people resonate with this and that and that's just how the wisdom is coming out so it's about helping people find that that wisdom that they draw upon the well you know so <laughs> cool it's all gonna unfold and it's gonna be amazing <laughs> I'm, well, just be patient. We all just got to be patient and set the intention. I'm committed to bringing this wisdom forth. That's all that I, like, that's what I said earlier. I was like, I'm committing to bring this wisdom forth. So say the same thing for you. Like, that's your mantra. I'm committed to bringing this wisdom forth. Because it may be that you already know the gene keys. The reason you're activated is because, like, all you have to do is remember. And then expand on it. Because I think that's what's happening is we're all expanding on it. That's what it feels like. It feels like, oh, like, oh yeah, I knew this, but it's a soul level remembering. And it, that's what the activation felt like. That's why it's, it, I guess it's all opalescent is because I, it's all there and all the gene keys are all there simultaneously. It is the rainbow, I guess. <laughs> I'll read about yeah. that. We're just choosing to look at a little piece of the rainbow. We're like, oh, that one. Where if you pull back and you're like, the whole rainbow, you know? So. And, and think about it this way, too. Like, um, Richard Rudd pulled. It's not his. This is proprietarily his, but he chose to separate them. What if we chose to combine them? And it's all one. We'll see. <laughs> well, it's in the wheel. And, like, when you and I were talking about the ceramics, I kept seeing the wheel, like, of all the hexagrams. Because you had mentioned to me how an activation came to you through the ceramic thing just how that came to me in the same in the dream through ceramics and so it is like wholeness in in a weird way <laughs> however we've found wholeness in the activation and all that but it is like the whole sphere is there and it is cyclical and it's like it's even too much sometimes for the conscious mind to <laughs> Yeah. To hold on to. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited. It's. I feel like there's a lot of people who were pulled into this group because you're all gonna do something with it. Like I joined the ambassador program in the Gene Keys Society, and I was in it for like two months, and then they started to put all these like rules and stuff, and I was like, mm, okay, and then I. I bowed down. I was like, I guess I'm not supposed to do something with the gene keys because I was going to be an advocate for that. And I'm like, I'm so glad that happened because now all this is unfolding for me. Like, no, you're not meant to like take his work and throw, spread it. It's like, you're meant to use that as a foundation. I feel like a lot of people in the group, it's like they needed this foundation because they're going to expand upon it. Just like I'm doing, you know, I'm just mastering this so that I can understand it at a logical level. And then my mind will be like, I'm ready to evolve you know so that's where a lot of people that join like people on this call there's a resonance there people who watch this recording there's a resonance there because they feel like they're going to use it in their work or they're going to expand upon it or it'll unlock something for them so oh <gasps> well and Mo and monica says that she believes it's a foundational piece for her too so yeah, I've, I've, a lot of people that are pulled in, it's like their time now. They're like, oh, yep, I'm ready. Especially, particularly the people who just joined right now, that joined the group right now. I felt your guys' collective energy. I'm like, oh, man, what are we doing here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, like, I kind of like not knowing because then it unfolds and it's super exciting. Like, I don't know right now, but I may know two seconds from now. But right now it's really exciting because you have that anticipation. You're like, what's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> And it makes it exciting. So, all right. Well, I thank you for calling us in through your beacon of light. Thanks. Um, if you haven't gone on my personal profile, go look on my, um, that lighthouse thing. I like received an activation with like a storyline with that. So you can read it or listen to it. And, um, it talks about you being your own lighthouse, your own beacon of light. That's what we all are. It's about finding your light and then shining it so bright. And everyone's like, Whoa, I'm in the dark. What's that over there? You know, so, yay!
A big surge of with all new beautiful souls that just joined. Yeah, Alicia. I'm so excited for this group and how it's growing. And um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's amazing to me. I just love this community because it's a commitment. I feel like we're all in this commitment energy. It's like, okay, I'm going to commit because what's scary signing up for something that's like monthly. We're like, Oh shit, that's a commitment. <laughs> right. And all of you guys just dove in and you're like, oh, I'll do it. And some of you were like, think about how you joined it. Right. I want you guys to really, really invest in, in that energy you join in. And it's like, are you here to just see how it goes for a month or are you here to see, to commit to bringing forth what you're meant to and not getting out before? Cause oftentimes we leave right before there's that epiphany. So just, and that's what the 29 gene key talks about is how the energy you go in <laughs> is how it ends. So recommit and find the purpose in why you're here and then continue to, to anchor into that purpose and show up for yourself. Cause it's all about, finding that inner wisdom within you. Cause that's the jinky teachings is about wisdom within. So let's find our wisdom within whatever it shows up for us. So yay. <laughs> All right. Well, I am hopping off and I'm going to go see what my kids are doing. I bet you one of them is passed out of sleep. So <laughs> I hope you guys have a good rest of your night and I'll post the replay in the group for everyone else to see. So thanks for joining me and staying on till the end. Our little try before. Made it to the end. We committed to the end, guys. <laughs> Commitment. We are in a devotion circle. <laughs>